All right, time for a video. I really don't feel like napping tonight. <clears throat> I think I'm coming down with something. So I chose something easy instead of the difficult one. Uh, finishing this out is going to be difficult. Yeah, for me, it's going to be difficult because um, I'm just starting to get used to this material. <clears throat> and if I'm not in the right frame of mind or feeling just right, I'm going to make a big mistake. It might all end up being really nice, really flaked, except for one area, and it'll mess up the whole thing. Yeah. So I'll leave this for a later time. Hopefully tomorrow. So I just randomly picked out a flake to nap tonight. So it's going to be flake to point. I do have some rocks that I can do rock to point. And I do have some unopened boxes that I need to do the unboxing. But I really don't feel like doing anything tonight. So, just going to work on something that I've, I've been wanting to make, a uh, just a regular arrowhead for a long time on video, you know, just a little one. Hopefully this is a heat treat, but I don't know yet. And yeah, I'm going to yap on this video, but like I said, <clears throat> I might be coming down with something because I don't feel in the mood to do much yapping. And sleep is pretty hard to get these days. This looks pretty good. I still can't tell if it's heat treated or not. That'll be part of the challenge too when I start making videos and asking you how did I nap this? You better be good enough to tell me if it's heat treat or not just by looking at it. Of course you will find out when I post the video of how I actually napped it and what it is. So yeah. I will try to make sure that I know if it's heat treat or not. If I don't know if it's heat treated, I'll tell you that I don't know beforehand. Yeah. The, the object of this exercise is not to, not to make it difficult, but to learn things. Yeah. Learn things from the experience of trying to guess how they were made and see how you do. So, let's see, it feels like it's heat treat. Yeah. It's one of those heat treats that you can't tell easily because it doesn't change color that much. There are heat treats that don't change color at all. And some that change color a lot. If it changes color a lot, then it's easy to tell if it's a heat treat. And if it changes in its glossiness and if you know that it changes then yeah it's easy to tell but this one I can't tell at all and sometimes you can tell by the cortex even if the regular stone doesn't change color sometimes the cortex will <clears throat> and that'll tell you it won't tell you the temperature it was heated to but it'll tell you that it was exposed to heat Some stone only needs to be heated to 275 degrees to be nappable or more easily napped. Yeah. Some requires very low heat and for not very long, maybe 30 minutes. 
is easily done by an open fire method, which I was going to demonstrate this summer, but I didn't get around to it because two reasons. One, I'm very busy. And number two, it's too hot. Too hot and humid. And then, oh yeah, third reason. The neighbors are suspicious of my fires that came over the other day. Said, so, we're just making sure you're far enough away from the buildings. It's hard to do here to be far enough away from the buildings because we're right next to each other. Yeah. It's always something. So yeah, I was far enough away from the buildings, but it takes the fun out of it if you got people staring down your neck. Yeah. Or whatever the expression is. It's a goldfish bowl. What are you doing over there? I'm hitting rocks. Yeah, and they have a potential to explode load and go through your windows. Yeah. So watch out. Really, you better not do it. Why not? It's so boring over here. Get some excitement. Yeah. It's not really that boring. But even if it was, boring is good. I'd rather have boring than exciting and cruddy things happening. What kind of cruddy things? The other day I had somebody's dog in my yard sniffing around. So I'm just moseying around. I don't know what I was doing. And the dog comes after me or starts coming after me. I go, wait a second. I turn around and I, I, I have this instinct where I, I, I charged any dog that charges me. I just started moving toward it and it turned right around, made a U turn, and took off. But yeah, I was gonna, it was gonna come after me in my yard. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't want that kind of stuff. So even though that was like, oh man, what a rush. That was, that was an adrenaline rush because that was, that was a pit bull mix. Yeah. Yeah, the dog was a pit bull mix of some sort. Or maybe a straight pit bull, I don't know. Yeah, I've learned, don't run away. No, no, no. Something, the dog charges you, you do not run away. Worst thing that happens usually is they just stop in front of you. Keep barking. If you start backing off, they'll come after you. Of course, some dogs, no matter what you do, they're going to bite. But this one just took off. Anyways. I much prefer the skunks roaming around here than those crazy stray dogs. Or not strays, but crazy escapees. They, that one escaped. <laughs> I'd rather have skunks around, even though they do... They do smell even though they're not they're not spraying. They leave little they leave little stinky poops in the yard. And it once in a while they'll catch a whiff of that. Where did it do its thing? Where is that little pile of smell? And you look around the yard. Aha! There it is. And it, it, it looks like uh <clears throat> It's just like cr critter scat. It got different things in it. It reminded me of the porcupine scat. Yeah. Or raccoon scat. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. I'd rather have them. They, they don't come around during the daytime. And I just got to watch where I'm going at night. They do run away. The skunks will run away. They don't just stand their ground and <clears throat> stick their tail up in the air. They, they do run away. They're not that dumb. 
All I'm going to do is make a loud noise of some sort. <coughs> and I hate when the, when the motorcycles go by up the street or at, at the street. They hate that. They just dash for cover. And they also hate it. There's a couple of guys out here that work on mopeds or something, but they don't put any mufflers on them. I don't know what it is, but they're super loud mopeds. They just up and down the street with those do-it-yourself mopeds. Well, I don't know what kind of engines in them. Yeah, the skunks don't like those either. They take off. But, you know, when I'm napping, I usually wait till my dad falls asleep. And that's when the skunks come out, too. That's just a strange coincidence. Shortly after sundown. I mean, yeah, shortly after sundown. Of course, my dad wakes up at 3 in the morning. That was a good nap. He looks at the clock. He thinks it's 3 in the afternoon. It's just time, almost time for supper. He says, is there something for a snack? I say, yeah. But, you know, I'd rather wait till the morning. And then he just doesn't say anything. And then a few minutes later, is there something for a snack? <laughs> he doesn't remember, you see. Very, very short-term memory. It's a bummer, yeah. For him. For me, it's a bummer, too, if he wants to be up all night. But not being able to remember. See, if you don't remember, you can't remember. I suppose it's not that bad. Yeah. He doesn't remember, he can't remember. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know that he doesn't know what nighttime is until he starts asking the question. What's what time is it? And then I tell him, and he goes, "What does that mean?" I'm confused. Don't worry, Dad. Even if I told you what it was and you were fully conscious and understood me, you wouldn't remember that, and you'll ask me again in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Time is it? <clears throat> Clock's right there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I know what it's like to start feeling that uh, disorientation thing. I was developing what I think was early onset dementia because of my diet. My food allergies combined with the, uh, I was starting to develop type 2 diabetes. I do have food allergies, or at least they're food sensitivities. <clears throat> I get weird reactions. And they're not the typical sore throat, itchy eyes, runny nose. It's not that kind of allergy. It's the fatigue and the brain fog. I can't remember. You give me a list of things. If I'm not feeling well, I can only remember two or three items on a list. If I'm feeling okay, I can remember, you know, a good amount. Maybe five or six, seven items from the list pretty easily. And if, I'm, <clears throat> if I've had too much sugar, too many soft drinks, what else used to get me really bad? Too much fruit. I used to eat a lot of fruit. But then I'd be zonked out on the couch, just chilling. Say, Don't bug me right now. I don't feel good. That kind of thing. Didn't know what it was for years. And I was headed in the, in the direction of not being able to think straight. And for, for unknown reasons, I had no idea why. So that's what it is, I think. I don't want to be heading down that way. 
Yeah, because I know I'm susceptible to the dementia thing. And maybe even Parkinson's. If I don't watch it. I almost did it. I almost did it. Let's see if I can pick it out. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't have the symptoms as bad anymore. I still have trouble with memory. But as long as I don't cheat on my diet and don't eat stuff that makes me feel sick, I do very well. Yeah, better than I was when I was 30. I'm 61. And I... My brain is better now than I, when I was 30, as far as being able to remember stuff. Yeah, believe it or not. I have huge periods of time where I don't remember anybody that I met during those years. Yeah. There's like periods of seven or eight years, blocks here and there. Or I don't remember meeting anybody. Or I met a bunch of people, I just don't remember who they were. It's pretty bad. I remember going over their houses and stuff. I just cannot recall their names. What they do. Were they friends of ours? I think so, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I don't remember going anywhere together. Just went over their house, maybe. That was it. No, that. There was a trip. Remember? A trip. Oh, one of those. One of those torture sessions. Yeah. No wonder I don't remember. <laughs> I don't like trips. But when you have a family, you go on trips every summer. And uh, if they drag you into it, you go on more than one trip. I don't got no choice. Got to be dragged into going on the trips. Yeah. Most of the kids liked it, so majority rules. Yep. There'd be like three of us just hanging out in the hotel room. No, we don't want to go there. But come on. It's fun. No, it's not fun. Besides, you're... Your brothers or your sister doesn't want to go either. So we can just sit here and chill. We're paying for TV service anyway, so see you later. I want to take advantage of this stuff we're paying for. Yeah. Netflix or whatever. Okay, but you're going to miss all the fun. I hope so. See you later. Yeah, because their kind of fun <clears throat> was my kind of torture. Anyways, you don't want to hear about that. <clears throat> oh, it almost did it. This cortex is much more difficult to remove than I would imagine. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like this. Supposed to be easy peasy, squeezy lemons. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I finally watched a movie today. Yeah. It's, a, it's an older movie. It's Tom Cruise is fighting aliens, but he. He's reliving the same day over and over again because he got infused with aliens' blood and the aliens are able to manipulate time. So he was able to reset time every day. Well, when he died, every time he died, he could reset the clock and go back, <clears throat> so to speak. Anyways, finally watched that movie. After I don't know how many years, I wanted to watch it. Long time ago. <coughs> yeah, 
I think I'm coming down with something because I can't remember the title. <coughs> I cannot remember the title. Okay, this is not. It's not cooperating. I, I think what I did was I ground it down too much near the tip. It's not a good thing. Oh yeah, I got pen marks from or trying to organize all my notes. You know, when the, when the pen, when you're writing and it starts to blob up, you wipe it somewhere. I subconsciously wipe it on my knee. Subconsciously because I didn't realize I had done that until I saw all these marks and I go, damn. Sometimes they come out in the wash, sometimes they don't. Where does it even matter? Because it's just one of those things that Looks stupid. <laughs> no one's gonna notice these days. Yeah. The only things they're gonna notice around here are the skunks and the neighbors' dogs and stuff. That's it. And if the neighbors are nosy, which I know they are, but uh, I don't care about that. I just care if they, they're looking in on my experiments. Yeah. So it might look like something else that I don't realize what it looks like. It might look like I'm trying to cook up some chemicals or something. I don't think he's cooking meat on that grill. What's that stuff? Go ask him where it is. I'm not going to ask him. You ask him. I'm not going to ask him. What is that stuff? I can just see it. I can see them doing that. All right. You couldn't see any of that, right? It's all blurry. You didn't miss much. There's no special technique to this pressure flaking stuff. Just got to get used to not crushing the edge. So you got to do. Figure out how to not crush it. There's different ways to do it. And it doesn't mean you have to grind it to death either. There are, you can find flat spots even though it's not well ground. It helps if it's well ground. But it's not completely necessary. It does help to get rid of the weak areas. <clears throat> yep. And prep it a lot. And make sure the tools have fresh metal if you're using metal. If you're using antler or natural tools, make sure it's, it's still the same principle. Make sure the tips are fresh and not embedded with rock dust and rock chips. It messes everything up. Yeah. I throw scraps out in the yard. That's going to eat it up too. <clears throat> yeah, I like them. Even though they're, they're a bit of a nuisance. I still like them. Yeah, whatever we don't eat. We used to have a compost pile. I stopped putting stuff in the compost pile and just throw it in the yard. Yeah. They eat what they like and they leave the rest and it gets mowed under if it's still sitting there. Like I had a bunch of strawberries one day. My dad didn't like them, so I said, well, I'm just going to throw them out in the yard. They stayed there for weeks. I think it was like two weeks. They were still there. And I'm saying, dang. i never seen strawberries that would stay there that long without being eaten by something. What is in the strawberries that they're selling at the supermarket? Hmm. It's really odd. Anyways.
skunks like granola bars. Yeah. So I'll, I'll buy something for my dad, and he's no, I don't like that flavor. So there it goes. They love granola bars. I found out. I found out first on YouTube. I said, dang, well, that's handy to know because I can go looking around and I can buy different varieties and whatever works, works. If it doesn't, it doesn't go to waste. I just give it to Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. And you're saying, that's why they come around. As if you didn't know why. <laughs> Acting like you didn't know why they come around. Being all scared. No, I'm just afraid that one of these days I'm not going to notice them sitting right there. As I walk around or open the door to the shop, I don't want them sitting right there because then they're going to get me if I scare them. Yeah. Those guns are excitable, the ones that we got around here. Yeah, they even they even uh, spit and hiss at each other a lot. When there was more than one in the yard. And they squeak like big mice. If, you know, they'll nip at each other. I've been watching them. I'm hearing this weird noise. So hisses and stuff like that. I go over there. I'm sitting on the front porch with my chair and I hear this. What is that noise? Sure enough, they're out there quibbling over a little pile of granola bars. Yep. And then someone will, I think they'll partially spray because I get a big whiff of that. What did they do? They better not have hit the side of the house with that spray. No, they're just giving warning shots or something. Shots across the bow. <laughs> it's a warning shot. And you usually see one of those guys scamper away. Lost the intimidation battle. Yeah. They intimidate each other. I've seen them. I watch them. I tried filming them, but I keep forgetting them. The volume on my phone doesn't work. So I get all this bzz, 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 bzz. when I film them. I go, dang it. I'm just going to forget it. My kids liked it last time I sent them a video. <clears throat> when it was working, when the volume on my phone was working, or the microphone, I should say. <clears throat> I got to remember to bring my fancy microphone with me all over the place now. If I want to video other stuff <clears throat> besides these videos. And yeah, there's one that's a pet skunk around here. One of them comes around with a blue collar. Blue collar skunk. Somebody's pet. <clears throat> yeah, somebody's little pet. Little pit poochie. <laughs> so, so funny. They're not legal here in Vermont as pets. They are in New Hampshire just across a border. It's less than a mile away, so maybe the skunk got lost or wandered over across the bridge. Wandered into the town. Yeah, I've been looking up what they do, and they, they wonder. They, they don't have like a homing sense where they always come back to the same house where they got raised or whatever. They go wherever. Wherever there's opportunistic food. Like a transient. Yeah.
Anyways, am I there yet with this? Almost. We're almost there yet. <clears throat> I'm going to leave the edge a little bit serrated. Or what appears to be serrations. Yeah. Don't need to be perfect. Perfect just takes more time. All right, so <clears throat> on these, I think that the bases are concave or straight. Yeah. <clears throat> I default to the rounded base because that's the easiest. But the, it seems most most points have either straight or concave. I think I don't know. I've lost track. I used to try to generalize this stuff, but I, I've lost track. I don't try to generalize anymore. I just I don't know. It just seems like most of these points are blah blah blah. But I. I don't know. Okay, you better work. I'm going to thin down this base. You better work. <clears throat> I'm not in a mood to mess with you. No, 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 no. I don't know. I do that with obsidian. I do that with shirt. I do that with glass. Yeah, I'm just testing the waters. That's my excuse for step fracturing the first hits. Testing the waters. Sticking my toes in the water. See what I need to uh, run a good flake without too much force. See, because I'm hitting the base, too much force is going to ruin it. Yeah. It'll either snap it in half or cause the flake to dive. Something will go wrong. All right. Actually, this is not the this is not the edge contour that I need. It needs to be a little more steep. So yeah, all that work, and I gotta repressurize it. Yeah. Just what you always wanted. All those nice serrations, they went bye bye. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. What do I gotta do? I'll talk more about. Non-napping related stuff. Yeah. Of course. And try not to get blurry. There's always someone in the back going, You can do big blades. Just do the big blades. I know I can do the big blades, but I don't like them. You're the only one that doesn't like them. It's so weird. I know. I know. But that's what you get. That's what you get for not watching the whole video. Yeah. Watch, you know. Just a little bit and move on because you're just, your brain is, and your thumb are the only things that connect it or whatever finger you use to scroll. Yeah. Everything else is not connected right. So you know how to do. Yep. 
Am I, am I making fun of you? Well, are you doing it? No, then I'm not making fun of you. Yeah, I'm not talking to you. If you're doing it, though, yeah, I'm making fun of you. <laughs> Some people get all mad because I'm offending other people. You offend people. I'm offended that you offend others. Yeah, that must be a hard life, I tell you. Yeah. Not much joy. Must be very, very disconcerting. Or whatever. Life must not be all that much fun. If you got time to be worried about other people, worried for other people or offended for others, yeah. I shouldn't talk about it. No. If you're offended by me talking about other people being offended, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I think it's funny when I say that. Some people say, stop making jokes for yourself. Just do the mapping. I'm tired of it. You know, some people get tired of things within five seconds. Yep. They, after five seconds of watching one of my videos, they're already thinking, <clears throat> he's doing this in every one of his videos. It's ridiculous. No, I don't do it in every one of my videos. If you're still here, I got the no talk. Sometimes I'm not in the mood, so I don't talk smack. It's all random. Random flaking, random yappings. Random point styles and tools. Random, blurry, or not blurry. Trying to zoom in on these things. I'm trying to do this edge also without abrading too much. Doesn't work all that well. <clears throat> it works better with some materials than others. It's working okay with this one. Some material will let you press on very delicate edges and take off these little flakes from the edges that sharpen it up. And some won't do it. This one is okay. It's like in the middle. It does let me do it a little bit. Luckily, I'm not in the mood to mess with it. Having to prepare the edge super duper fantastically great. I can get away with it not being perfect as far as the edge quality for pressure flaking. Yeah. And the pressure varies. And the angles vary. And the forces inward and downward, they vary. Yeah. Depending on how the contour looks. Some people think that it's all the same pressure. And it's pressure discipline all the way down to be the same exact exact, but it's not. It's every flake is different, at least the way I do it. Now, if you prepare the surface perfectly and the edge perfectly, then yeah, you can be doing the same pressure every time. Same, 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 same. But if it's got random flaking and bumps and lumps everywhere, pressure is always different. No two flakes are exactly the same. They're very similar, but you got to do the little tweaks to get them to look right and to not get step fracturing. Yeah, and it takes a lot of practice. And you pay the dues. Like I had my shoulders getting better, but after several months of intense pressure flaking practice on and off camera, I was starting to develop an impingement in my shoulder. 
which means the bones start to rub against each other or something rubs in the wrong way because you've got a muscle imbalance in the muscles around your shoulder. My, my shoulders are starting to hunch forward and I got an impingement. <clears throat> it's getting better now because I, I do exercises to strengthen the muscles in the opposite direction. Yep, it works. So I'm like, I'm not all scrunched over as much. There, things working out better. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, so it, it just takes a lot of practice doing the pressure flaking. And after a while, you don't have to think about it too much. Until someone asks you, how much pressure is it? How much? Although I don't get much, I don't get many questions on pressure flaking. It seems that everyone pretty much knows how to do pressure flaking. And they, they're more advanced than I am in many cases, of course. I didn't focus on pressure flaking when I started. I didn't like it. Everything was percussion. I liked percussion on everything. Yeah. So that's what I did. Yeah, right there is fine. So yeah. Still I'm still working on pressure though. I haven't perfected the pressure. If I ever do, that'd be a miracle. But you know, there's a lot to learn in that arena. Because you can do a lot of different things with pressure. It has a little bit of better flake control than percussion. Some people will say, no, it has a lot more better. Okay, a lot better. I get pretty good control with indirect percussion. So, and that's in the percussion game. So I don't consider the pressure game all that much more sophisticated than percussion, right? Pressure is not all that much more sophisticated than percussion. You can do a lot with percussion. But, you know, there's some things that are very difficult. It's easier just to go with the flow and just do the pressure flaking instead of trying to do it with percussion. I gotta admit, percussion is great, but sometimes you just gotta go with the flow. And I can watch videos where guys are doing pressure flaking and say, oh, that's how you do it. All right, cool. Now I go back to the way I do it. Because <laughs> a lot of guys are using the vertical. Vertical pressure flaking. Or the nachomatic. If you don't know what that is. Just ask me in the comment section. Or other, other devices for notching. There's devices for notching. You know what I mean? There's little, I've seen this one gadget that works by turning like this. It has two prongs on a piece of wood and one prong goes up on top and one goes underneath, I think, and you pop the flakes out upward or do it the other way and pop the flakes downward. It's a kind of a lever device where you have two prongs sticking out the side and you just you notch like that. I think that's how it works. I, I was, some guy was going to demonstrate it for me at a nap-in, but I never, he never got around to it, or I forgot about it. He demonstrated it, and I missed it, but I never got to see it done. But yeah, there's devices out there for notching. 
How come you never heard of it? It's not a very common thing. There's a lot of things you probably never heard of. Little quirky things that people come up with every now and then. Am I going to use it on my video? On one of my videos? Probably not. But you never know. You never know on this channel. I say one thing and then do something else. And then I blame it, blame it on brain abnormalities, and then I wonder why people say I'm weird. <laughs> why you call me weird? It hurts my feelings. <laughs> no, it does not. Don't worry about it. I know no one worries about hurting my feelings, but if there is such a thing, don't worry. Take it easy. No worries. I need my little, the little pointy one. <clears throat> Where's the pointy one? There it is. Are we there yet? No, we're, no, we're not there yet. We've, we've almost been there yet for quite some time. So we're still almost there yet. Pushed against the tip, the tip against my leg. That'll ruin your day. Yep. You don't want that. Damn, I'm trying to thin this edge and it's not working. Come on. Come on. There it is. Sometimes I don't mess, out, mess up these pop-outs. Sometimes it messes up the edge when I try to do too many of these pop-outs for the serrations. But they can help you thin down and, and sharpen the edge. Yep. If you do it right, that's the thing. Then don't worry, people will tell you if you're not doing it right. I'm blown away the serrations that I just created. That's not how to do it, boys and girls. No. I'm tired. I got an excuse. I was up all night last night. Literally. Because somebody wanted some snacks. It takes me forever to go back to sleep. Yeah, but that's what that's what happens. Well, I'm trying to see. There's a bunch of dust on the on the viewfinder. I'm trying to see if you can see. Can you see? I'm trying to see. All right, so I'm going to put some notches up here too, but it seems a little thick up on the tip. But I don't know. I could put notches where it would make it thinner and repair some bumpy areas. Still working on serrations, so don't worry. You didn't miss it yet. If you look away right now, you're going to miss it.
Hold on. You didn't miss it yet. I know you're over there by the fridge. No, you didn't miss it yet. Here we go. <laughs> Did that do it? Yeah, it took away some of the crunchies that were right there. I'm just going to put small notches near the tip. But in the, you know, in the process of doing that, I can uh, remove some of the crunchiness. If I play my cards right. I don't know. Ooh, that was okay. Yeah. Yep, that was good, actually. Yeah, I've been wanting to do the one of these for a long time. So I think they look cool. Yep, yep. Yep, there's actual points that look like this. For arrows. Yeah. I think they're down by Falcon Lake in Texas. It's a regional, regional point. Now if I just do it correctly. A lot of times I use, I use a spatula tool for this. But I think this will work. I'm hoping. Why am I hoping? I have a lot more control with the pointed flaker. Believe it or not. Well, at least it feels like I have more control over the size of the flakes with the pointed one. See, the special tool is good for notching, but it's hard to control the shape and size of the flake. It just basically pushes downward when you use a special tool. With this one, I can push inward. Yep. Anyway, we're almost there. Good enough. I think that's good enough. But I do need to make the base a little bit more <clears throat> concave. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Let's see what kind of foreshaft it looks good with. This one here. Wow. Of course, the one that fits all the other airheads too, just perfectly. How do I do it? 
I don't know. I raised myself. Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can take a photograph of that. Photo. It's not on straight. Yeah. Where's the wrappings and the bindings? I don't like to do those on camera. It's a lot of fumbling until I get used to it. But yeah. I can do bindings on camera. One of these days. But there it is. It's got serrations, but it, it, it's just uh, crude serrations. They're not really deliberate. As far as the spacing goes, it's just same old, same old all the way up. And they're just extra notches near the tip like they used to do it. I don't know why. It's, region, it's a regional variant. Alrighty. There you go. That's it.